Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a very simple, beautiful painting loosely based on springtime colors. So of course, if you're enjoying these, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. We'll start off today here with our two inch brush and some blue and white. And of course, I just put a little bit of clear gel and white at the top. There. Of course, the you know how the brush is sometimes a little dirty, especially mine. So that's why it kind of looks a little bit gray. Not that that's going to be a big deal at all. I don't think it'll change anything. There. All right. So we'll just drop in our very beautiful light sky. We'll have some clouds today, but not a whole lot. I'm thinking about just touching a little bit of red into that pile, which I just did. And I might scoot some of that right up in here. Yeah, that's pretty. I just like it. Just looks nice is all. Next, I'll load up our filbert brush with a little white. And this is very standard. You guys know how to do this. We're just gonna roll in some clouds. They're not a whole lot of paint because we don't, we don't have a lot of sky to cover. You see, we really limit the amount of paint on here and then you don't have to worry about it. There, see that? And then if you'd like to make these clouds even brighter white, you can take your little paper towel and wipe off this area. This is the way that you can continue painting oils all in the same day. You just wipe it off like that. You can get a brush and, and blend it in, kind of knock off some of the paper towel shavings, should there be any. And there we go. See that? Blend it in. Come back with your white and watch the difference. See how it's brighter? The paint up here is your worst enemy, so you limit it as much as possible. There. All right, I think it's already time to start highlighting. So I'm gonna just go through our white here and yellow and green. Filbert brush here, of course, is a good, good brush to highlight with. I'm just gonna start and drag down. Rather than tapping, which is a really good technique, I'm just gonna drag to soften the edges. Of course, you want blurry, blurriness in the background. There. Light's coming across like this. Mm. Nice. So look, watch when you tap it. See when you tap it, you get that clumpy look. And when you pull it, you get a blurry look. And the blurry look's the one we're going for right this minute. We'll go for a clumpy look later, maybe. And I'll just continue to kind of change the colors, but everything needs to be very, very nice light green. Not a lot of oranges, because the oranges kind of make it feel like the wrong season, if you know what I mean. Yellows are good though. You can go straight up yellow and white if you want to. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Good, so anyways, you just work on these trees. Maybe some green and white, no yellow. Let's see what that does for us. So I'm just gonna play around with these trees till we kind of get this done using a variation of color. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit more underpainting here. You can see I've already been working on, this is just a bridge. I just suggested that with a few brush strokes. It obviously needs a lot of work. And now I've got really a nice tan color and I'm gonna underpaint my road in this color. Obviously you don't want the entire road that way. So I'll throw some brown in there. Maybe a touch of blue and red, cause blue and red together make purple. So that's acceptable back there. Good. This is pretty. And I'm thinking about putting some beautiful shadows across this road. So we'll make sure that we get it light enough that the shadows will, you know, they'll show up and they'll have a lot of contrast and all that good stuff. So there you go. <laughs> Just keep working on this. The only important spot is probably back here where it needs to look like you can walk right onto the bridge from it. That's the point of the path after all. Now we're going to go ahead and work on some trees up here and I'm doing them the slow way with the little detail round brush. You can do them the fast way with a filbert brush, but I'm not going to because I want little, I want a little more control. I've got the time. I'm not going to paint that many trees today. <laughs> nice. See, you can get these beautiful open textures with this brush. This is a, you know, a really good brush to use when it's worn out as well as when it's brand new out of the box. There's some right here. Just sort of mush these together. Now I went ahead and just underpainted a little tree up here while I was going with all my dark colors. Just did that with the little, with the little 
detail around. And now I'm going to drop on some, some leaves. We're going to do a pink tree. And I've done these in the past, and they've been a lot of fun. People seem to enjoy them. So that's good. I love painting them. I just don't get to do it a lot. Boy, but now that it's springtime, I've been looking around. I always like to point out the pink trees because you would really not think that this exists in nature, but it does. There. All right, so really I'm going to go solid here in the middle. Not totally solid, but close to it. And maybe, maybe stroke this a little more. Maybe I don't want it so clumpy. Yeah, let's stroke it just a bit. Good. And when you, when you pull a brush stroke, what that does is it, it blends and feathers your object out. I don't care if a little bit of that brown gets in. I certainly don't want it to become muddy though. There we go. Of course, we'll highlight all this and make it just that much better. Now I'm going to go ahead and layer on some leaves to this tree. And I'm doing it now with the detail round brush. And because we smushed this in with the filbert for the most part, we have, you know, we have a lot of paint kind of worked well into the canvas. So now we can layer over a highlight or even two or three with a softer detail round without having any muddy issues. Now, if you go to do this with a filbert brush, you'd have to put on a lot more paint. You can do it and you may want to, but uh, for now, I'm just going to stick to this because I don't have to use as much paint. And I like that because it allows me to get more highlight than I would otherwise be able to get. There, we'll go right up here. And then we'll kind of finish up maybe with a couple more mid-tones and a couple highlights, but it's all the same exact thing, just different color. So maybe a bit over here. There you go. I sort of darkened it a touch. All the, just a variation of pink. There. And that's fine. That looks good, but you know, you got to go in with the really light, really light areas as well. There. You can use pure white because it'll mix with the paint that's already down. Now I'm going to do something which I have done in the past. I don't know if I've done it with you guys, but I'm going to paint in some lily pads. These are actually a lot of fun. They're not so hard, actually. You know, you'd think, oh, the painting of lily pads hard now. Oh, we did paint lily pads. Remember that? <laughs> Remember that water lily painting? There were a few lily pads in that one. <laughs> okay, so we definitely have done them together, which is cool. But now we're going to do them small and in a landscape, so fun. This is going to be really fun. I just indicated a couple of quick and loose reflections, nothing big. And now I'm just coming in mostly with the darks, but with light as well, you know, mid-tones. And we definitely need some color right here. Good. So now I'm going to build on this, just adding little bits of green. And, you know, you can kind of work. Don't work too fast, don't work too slow. Kind of work at a nice pace, getting little lily pad shapes. So you can't, you can't rush this too much. You can do it a little bit, not too much, because what you're trying to accomplish is making a bunch of little shapes that all kind of look like something, but without spending a ton of time trying to do it. And of course, each one should try to at least touch the next one. That way you don't have anything that stands out. Like little rocks, you know how sometimes we'll paint rocks and by accident, if you know, if you're not careful, you can get them that look like that. <laughs> anyway, we don't want that. I guess a lot of words to try to save, just don't get them symmetrical. Make sure each one touches another. You can come in with the light first and then the dark, or the dark and then the light. Doesn't make a whole lot of difference with this. Maybe as they come forward, they get just a touch larger. Definitely throw some blues in here too. Mm, so pretty. Now I'm just going to brush on a little bit of blue here and that will help to kind of create a, you know, a little bit of a reflection of the sky in the water here, especially where it's moving very quickly out in that open area. And as you come down toward the little lily pad field, maybe you go a little bit less. Number one, we don't want to hit them and turn this thing bright green. And number two, you just don't need a lot of fast moving water down here. There. So as you come closer to the foreground, less of this. Now back here, you want a lot of it, 
but you want the strokes to be a little bit choppier. There, if you have any trouble with this, just wipe down the area with a paper towel. Then you'll be able to highlight very easily. Now I'm gonna go ahead and place in some wildflowers. You can see I spent just a couple seconds making a sunflower or two back there. Very simple, just a little dark orange and then light yellow. And now I'm just gonna dot on some wildflowers. Because of course in the springtime, you get a lot of wildflowers, that's just normal. So we're gonna really wanna make sure we get some in here. That color looks a little weird. Let me change it. <laughs> Sometimes your palette gets so messy it's tough to find good color, but there we go. Touch in. I actually like that one. A little bit marbled on the br on the brush there, and it creates kind of some variation. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and I'll touch this pink maybe around here. Maybe that's flowering. You know, different little little bits of color. Just splash color around. Who cares what anything else kind of looks like? Just throw some color. If it looks like a flower, great. If it doesn't, that's great too. <laughs> Just the color alone will be worth having. There, and especially over here, make a few wildflowers. You can go as detailed as, obviously, <laughs> as detailed as you want with these things, but I'm just gonna throw the rest of these in pretty quick. Not spend too much time on them. They're just there for color. Now last, we can go ahead and finally put on some little limbs to these trees. All the trees should get limbs as well. Well, maybe not those guys back there, but <laughs> as well as the grass. This will help to detail everything out and make it look so pretty. Purposely bring some of these right over your pink because what that'll do is make it look like flowers instead of leaves because leaves, of course, have, you know, they're very dense and they cover quite a bit. But flowers, on the other hand, although they do cover like leaves, there's not quite as many. I know this because I've been looking at flowering bushes recently. Flowering trees, I mean, because they're out there. <laughs> and you don't even have to worry about the, you know, you don't have to like go find a special wild tree or anything. I'm talking about the, <laughs> the trees in the parking lots and stuff. There. Nice. Okay, so I'm just going to keep doing this over and over again until I have satisfied with the level of detail. Also slide right down here, same color. And I'm gonna pull up some grasses that are beautiful against the dark against the light there. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs and Brush Line. Thanks for watching.